Welcome to Star Tracks. Today I'm going to do the show Game of Thrones. It's amazing how the actors and actresses, they really do bring out the energy of their zodiac signs in this show. And they were cast perfectly. So I'm going to go through and then at the end I have some bonuses. There are so many synchronicities and so many cool things about the astrology of the actors and actresses who played on the Game of Thrones. These cards really go well with actually everything that ended up in the entire show, in the entire series, the finale, the ending. And that's actually where I want to begin at the end, and you'll see why. Maisie Williams is the Aries, and she plays Arya Stark, and Arya Stark's character is so Aries. Aries is the first sign of the Zodiac, so it's all about just, you know, getting out into the world, just go for it. There's really not a lot of time to think because everything is so new and she just wants to go out and just explore the world. Aries also rules the head. It's ruled by Mars. What an interesting thing that she ends up going blind in the series. There's this whole thing with her head. So that's an interesting thing that shows she was meant to play that role. Arya Stark is just that character, she just lives impulsively. And she does follow her instincts a lot, which is something that an Aries does. Aries is also ruled by Mars, which is very masculine. So it just shows how Arya, she's not concerned about, you know, the beautiful clothing and all that femininity that the other girls are interested in. She is a little bit masculine, where she just wants to be this fighter, this warrior. So Arya Stark is a perfect example of an Aries. You know, and for her to be on the death card, it just makes a lot of sense because she is the ending and she is the beginning, actually. And, you know, in the very last episode, what does she do? She goes out to explore a whole new world. She's like, what is west of Westeros? So right there, starting the whole cycle all over again is what she's doing, which is the death card, rebirth, the death of the old, and the beginning of the new. So she is also the five of coins, which is the struggle. And in the five of coins, she's blind and she's begging, and that's a time of struggle. It's when things aren't working out. And then she's also the two of swords, which represents doubt. And not doubting yourself, basically, is the lesson of the card. So her whole lesson in the series is don't doubt yourself. Follow your instincts. Follow your intuition. I mean, she needs to do that in order to get through so many things, especially when she's blind. So like I said, Aries does rule the head as well. And another character that we see that is also played by an Aries, which is Isaac Hempstead Wright, who plays Bran Stark, ruled by the head. There, what I was just saying, Aries, it rules the head. What happened to Bran? Well, he actually has a third vision of sorts. You know, she, you know here he is here as the hermit in the tarot. And here's his, his raven. So the raven that can see, you know, holding the lantern, the hermit. And so, you know, Bran, he is an Aries. He's just go, go, go. In fact, he was climbing and, you know, saw something he shouldn't have seen. And, you know, that caused so many problems, made him handicapped. And so, you know, it just shows that the Aries energy can create a lot of issues if you're very impulsive and don't follow rules because you're just doing this whole youthful, like, I'm going to go and just do what I want, which is very Aries, Mars ruled, you know. But in the end, and to the very end, which he ends up becoming king in the end, spoiler alert, sorry about that, uh, but I did say, you know, this is really encompassing the entire show because the Aries is the beginning and the end, just like Arya Stark. And I just feel that it's just so interesting how the both of them had issues with the head. Both of them are Aries. And the whole thing with Bran is that he saw something he shouldn't have, and it created him to actually get a third type of vision, okay, to be able to have this other type of vision. So interesting that two Aries play these two very Aries characters in the Game of Thrones. He's also, Bran is also the Page of Cups, which a message of love, and in the very end, you know, he is the one that brings the Cup of Peace to the entire new world that he is creating. The Seven of Cups, here he is with the visions, being able to see all these different outcomes that were possible brand able to do that 
Aries. So, very interesting. Both ruled by Mars, both fire, uh, you know, just impulsive, youthful energy going out there. So, I thought that was really interesting that they played. The characters that they played fit them perfectly. All right, next up we have Taurus. Now, Taurus energy is very, you know, bullish and, you know, it is strong energy. Its presence is known, okay? You know there's an, a Taurus in the room when a Taurus is in the room, okay? That's why they say they're like the bull in the china shop. You know they're there. Whether it's their ego or their heart that you're feeling, you're going to feel it. Now, a negative Taurus would be a very devilish energy, right? Because that ego is creating what they're going to do in the moment, which is going to overpower you. So Tauruses could be very evil, which I think that's why the devil card. I remember watching the show, Ramsey Bolton was the one character. I actually couldn't watch some of his scenes. Um, he just was an evil person. So I could see why they put him as the devil. Ramsey Bolton is played by Iwan Rion. He is a Taurus, and he does have that evil Taurus look, so he plays a villain very well. Knight of Swords is showing how, you know, he's gonna, you know, just be killer, you know. But then there's some Tauruses that aren't so bad. They're actually good Tauruses, like Ned Stark. So he's a Taurus. And in the tarot, he is justice. So he is somebody who's trying to balance things out. Sometimes though, you know, for example, with Ned just kind of hiding certain things that created an imbalance in the end, you know, not knowing who Jon Snow truly was. But, you know, he was trying to balance things out with what he thought was the right thing. So Tauruses generally do like to do the right thing. And also Ned Stark is represented by the King of Spears. So here he is a king and the spears are representative of, you know, your career or or your your stability, who you are, your label, what you are. And Ned Stark was very even though he wasn't there in the show a lot, we just knew who he was and he was somebody who had an honor like he was somebody who we honored or looked up to or thought of as like a staple in this entire show, Ned Stark. So he is very king-like. Now, what you also, you know, Ned Stark is also pretty, um, he's got the long hair, kind of has a feminine touch to him, just like Peter Baelish, who is also, you know, Littlefinger played by a Taurus. So here we have another Taurus, Littlefinger, the manipulator. That's all dressed up, the fancy manipulator there, Littlefinger. Yes, Taurus. That represents Taurus right there, you know? Looking all nice and polished and, and all that, but really manipulating the entire family, friends, and community. Just manipulating everyone to get what he wants. I mean, that is just what Tauruses do. And they're good at it. So, you know, we need them to do these kind of things. Sometimes it's for good. Sometimes it's for bad. Who knows? You just never know. Hopefully it's for the good because Tauruses have a big heart. Venus is love and they have a big heart. So when they're doing things for good, they can kind of make all these things work out and it's all for good. Now, Peter Baelish, he didn't always do it for good. Sometimes it was for selfish means. Here we have him as the king of coins. So he is, you know, holding on to what he wants and, and he's making all these things happen for himself. We have him as, uh, here he is, the Three of Spears, looking out, watching his ships come in. So he's looking out, watching his ships come in. He's like, all right, I, I, may, I, I put this here, I put this here. He, you know, he had a strategy, and now he's watching it all come forth to him and, and give him all the gold and all the treasure that he wants. The Magician. Okay, so Taurus is the Magician. I, I actually agree with that. I do believe in the Magician as very Taurus energy. And to have Peter Baelish little finger jeepers. And I, I always notice Tauruses have very fine features. And it's the Venus. Venus wants the men to be beautiful and the women to be beautiful. So they even try to look beautiful. And I think that was definitely Peter Baelish in the Game of Thrones. Ned Stark and the devil Ramsey. Wow, just Taurus right there. So next up, 
is Gemini. And for Gemini, one of the favorite characters in the Game of Thrones is actually the fool, Peter Dinklage, is a Gemini. And Geminis are air. They are everywhere. They take both sides because they're two-faced. But uh, sometimes for good purposes. But, you know, it's more about, like, manipulation just like Taurus. So Geminis want to manipulate everything, and they are everywhere. And they say Geminis are very friendly, and people trust Geminis instantly until they get to know them, and they're like, whoa, I don't think I should have trusted this guy. I just saw another side to him I didn't know existed. So he is the fool. He is the one that throughout the entire show is basically playing both sides. So he basically is two-faced like a Gemini. And there's a lot of thinking. I mean, he is in a, he is an advisor, so there's a lot of thinking and him having to play two sides and knowing what's going on. And here we have him also as the page of coins, which a page is a messenger. Coins is money, uh, value. So he really is the messenger of what's valuable. He really knows what's valuable, you know, whether it's the land, the people, you know, the dramas, whatever it is, he kind of knows what's valuable and how to kind of make things work. So the other thing is who is not represented in the tarot is King Joffrey. He is also played by a Gemini. So very interesting that the evil young king played by a Gemini and Geminis are two-faced and the trickster of the Zodiac, they're pretty evil. You know, there are good things about Geminis. I'm not saying everything's bad. They're very friendly. You know, they get along with everybody. They're the life of the party sometimes. They're very artistic. There's some great things about Gemini. Um, but as far as with the Game of Thrones, if we're looking at, you know, really, who is the nastiest one in the entire show? Probably would be the Gemini is King Joffrey. I mean, we were glad to see him go. Next to Ramsay Bolton, who was also evil, played by the devil in the tarot here. You know, he was very devilish in the show. But King Joffrey was the one that we didn't want to watch. We were hoping he would just disappear. I remember thinking, like, watching this show, like, I can't wait till this character is just gone. So maybe that's why the tarot didn't even want to represent him, because I couldn't find a Joffrey card, a King Joffrey. But he's a Gemini. And, you know, looking at current times, we do have a Gemini as our king right now. It's fucking scary. And speaking of scary monsters, who do we have as the Night King but a Cancer? Cold water. He's a Cancer, so he's ruled by the moon. And he's water, so he's like frozen water. It just makes so much sense, okay? And Judgment is like, whoa, everybody, I'm going to kill everyone if you guys don't team up and, and beat me. If, because, like, you really are powerless alone. So everyone had to, like, join up together. And I think that's kind of what Judgment talks about. It's like, with Judgment, there comes a time when you have to kind of look over everything and go, okay, here's what we need to do. We need to... Uh, put everything together this way. We need to join forces here. We need to reawaken this. We need to do these certain things. It's like time to just judge and then, you know, make things happen. So it was really interesting in the show, Game of Thrones, how all these people had to get together and ask, actually ask the queen, you know, the evil queen, um, to join forces with them because they can't beat this you know evil king of these evil night walkers without joining forces and king of swords so they actually gave him a king card in this and um so basically for cancer we also have jorah mormont also was played by a cancer and i think that's really interesting because cancer is home and connection sister brother type energy and um jorah was you know basically daenerys's companion in a way very person that made her feel like she was always at home so i thought that was interesting and one more cancer that i definitely need to mention because she's super cancer and i mean everything to the feminine the moon the Empress, everything about her, that's Jilly, which is Sam's wife, who has the baby. 
So she's so cancer, you know, she's got, you know, she's a mother and she's a feminine energy. She's the moon. And so, you know, she's a really important character in this. Um, so that's Jilly, who is played by Hannah Murray. And she is a cancer. So that's really interesting that, you know, we have we have this warm water that she is. She's this warm water that keeps us all comforted to know that there's still going to be a future for these people in Game of Thrones. And she's got that feminine touch and she's just this very soft cancer energy that we need in the show. And then you have, you know, that with the opposing of the 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 uh the Night King, who is the frozen water, comes out at night, the moon, you know. So just really interesting to see that dynamic there. Uh, I love the way they picked out, you know, the King of Swords for him and Judgment to show that, like, basically he's going to do some damage. Uh, so you really have to be strong to go up against the Night King. And Cancers are very strong, very strong water. I mean, they have the moon, which is the moon. I mean, the clo one of the closest beings to us you know that controls us that controls what we are just like the night king who's water being controlled by the moon by the night and then the people the zombies being controlled and all of this idea be behind the idea that they're all cancer okay so it's and it's like a cancer on the community to have these night walkers out there but what about the sunshine? Let's let the sunshine in now, okay? Instead of all this darkness, what about the sun? That's Leo. Leo is ruled by the sun. It's a fire sign. And Leo's love to look beautiful. And I think that's why it's Jamie Lannister, of all people. The one that is handsome, has to be handsome, always wants to look handsome, is who the Leo is. And he's also, you know, the loud Leo, the flashy Leo. That's Jamie Lannister. Here we have him as the Knight of Spears. So he is the knight that comes in. He's like a knight in shining armor. You know, he is a knight. And Spears is fire, so we've got that fire of Leo, the Knight of Spears. So that's who we have for Leo, Jamie Lannister. <laughs> you know, when he's hurt, he's a cub. Oh, poor me, poor me, just looking at his little wounds. And then when, you know, he's all okay and not tied up somewhere but just out and being the knight that he is he's all flashy and he's got his gold and he's all flashy and all that and he's sleeping with the queen and and all that so yeah total leo drama king and all that kind of thing all right but one thing that is good about leos is that leos are very loyal and he was loyal to the end to his own sister girlfriend lover whatever he was loyal to the end so uh as much as he caused a lot of drama in the family uh you know he also was loyal to the end and he went back for his woman so that was interesting next up virgo virgo is an earth sign virgo is the book smart analytical healer virgos they they look deep into things they're ruled by Mercury. So Virgos, you know, they're they're an earth sign and they want to get deep. So they make good doctors or people who want to re do research. Um, it's the sign of, you know, Virgo the Virgin, that newness of a discovery. You know, wow, I just discovered something, you know. But Virgos are also very skeptical. So they're good at kind of looking at both sides of a situation. Hmm, you know, which what should we do? And they uncover different truths, just like well, Sam, played by John Bradley, is a Virgo. And, you know, here we have him in the Nine of Cups, and he's there with his books, and the Nine of Cups represents making a wish and manifesting it. So Virgos are good at that. You know, they're good at healing, they're good at healing situations, not just situations, but people, situations. They're good at healing things. They're good at making things make sense. Sort of like temperance. That's one of the cards that we have Sam on. Temperance. Temperance is all about balance and compromise. So one of the interesting things about Sam is that he's the one that discovers who Jon Snow 
really is, his true identity, and, and what part he plays in this whole story. And because of what Sam discovers, that's what creates this whole other, you know, timeline, that event, like this whole thing that just happens because this truth is uncovered. So because of Sam, you know, things change, things happen. And that's temperance is that balancing the compromise, the, the way that things have to be to balance things out for order. Seven of Swords. So Sam is also the Seven of Swords. Okay, so in the Seven of Swords, it's like there is a way out. You will figure it out. So he's the, he's the one that figures things out, right? He's the one that's kind of, you know, saying let's, let's do it this way. Let's do things this way. Or... You know, just kind of going deep. And, he, you know, what's interesting is, like, you don't think of Sam as courageous. But he really is. And he, you know, he's one of the first people who discovers what can kill a Nightwalker. And, you know, he's full of discoveries. He's full of ways to heal people. He heals the problem. He solves the problem that they have with the Nightwalkers by discovering what will actually kill them. So, in a way, that's how he saves people. And speaking of saving people, yeah, the Red Witch. She is played by a Virgo. So, the Red Witch, who brings alive, who brings back alive Jon Snow, she is a Virgo, Virgo the Healer. And she is someone who just has this presence about her like a virgin like that idea that she's untouchable that she just knows things that she's holding it all in and you know she's got this energy about her it's beautiful it's so beautiful and she actually brings Jon Snow back to life Virgo healer makes sense right she was born to play that part All right, so that's Earth, and now let's go back up in the air where we have Libra. And Libra is ruled by Venus, and Libra is all about beauty and grace, but there's really no feeling attached to it. It's more just about things being a certain way, you know? Looking at something and seeing its perfection by seeing that it's, you know, perfectly aligned or that it's symmetrical and just seeing things balanced. That's Libra, and it's air. So it, even though it's love and romance and the pleasures of life, you know, that can get mixed up without feeling. And that's where we see Cersei, Cersei Lannister. She is the queen without any feeling. She is the queen who just wants things to be perfect, to be beautiful. And of course she has to have the most beautiful sign of the Zodiac as her mate, which is Leo. Unfortunately, the only Leo is her brother, so that's fucked up. But she doesn't care, because Libras don't really care. Because air signs don't really feel the way water and earth can feel. So, biggest cold-hearted bitch in the Game of Thrones, Cersei Lannister, Queen of Swords. She is the Queen of Swords. She is the Queen of Air, non-feeling, just wanting things to take place. Her strategy, her thinking, the things she wants to happen, it's a game to her. It's a Game of Thrones, and she wants to sit on her throne and she wants to watch everything fall into place for her. And the thing about that is, you know, sometimes things don't balance out on their own. You have to actually make it happen. The Five of Cups is all about, you know, paying more attention to the destruction and the loss and not really, you know, focusing on the good or the things that can come about in the future, the good things. It's just paying attention to the past and the old and the loss. 
So the Five of Cups, you know, being a challenge, but also having to do with feelings. Something that she's not used to, you know, so she doesn't even know how to turn things around. And, you know, in the end, she just ends up having to die because there's nothing left for her and there's nothing left to her story. She was just a cold-hearted person who tried to make things happen because she wanted to see the beauty in the game and of it happening, but not anything connected to her heart. She was just heartless, you know? So, Libra. I mean, what are you going to do? One of the great things about Libras is that they are gracious hosts, and they are good at, you know, putting on a show. And she was beautiful. Oh, her, oh, the costumes in Game of Thrones were amazing. I loved all the clothing they wore. I mean, the costume design was amazing. And her outfits especially. And she's just beautiful. A beautiful face. You know, just having a beautiful everything to be able to play that role. Because only a Libra can bring beauty and grace to such an evil character I mean but to also make you want to still love that character because it was very hard but you still wanted to connect and you still wanted to feel something for her uh, just because you're watching and she's a female especially if you're a female but you know that whole idea that we still had to care for her somewhat to actually keep her character alive on the show and one of the ways they did that was with her beauty so I feel that they they cast her perfectly. She was perfect. Oh, she was believable and perfect. Now, going on to my favorite character of all, and the most perfect character, the most perfect everything, for sure, and she is a little bit Libra because she's on the cusp of Libra Scorpio, is the mother of dragons, Daenerys Targaryen, played by Amelia Clark. Amelia Clark is a Scorpio, and she is awesome. She's a Libra Scorpio, so it's just that perfect little bit of everything. It's a little bit of balance and that little bit of deadly Scorpio, powerful, just that darkness ruled by Mars, giving her all that strength and that masculinity that you need to play that character. Uh, to play a woman who is in charge of all these men and women, but men, you have to have a masculine side to you. So they had to have a female ruled by Mars to play that part. And, you know, we could have had an Aries play that part, of course, but then that Aries would be a little too, you know, just fire. We needed someone who we could see her fall in love with Jon Snow. We could see her fall in love and to give birth and to represent all that is that feminine energy of the scorpion. And Scorpion is ruled by Mars, but it's also ruled by Pluto. And Pluto represents the underworld, the darkness, and that deepness inside of us that gives birth to dragons. Whoa! What if we could give birth to dragons just because? Like, because, you know, we're Scorpios. I'm a Scorpio, so, I mean, I did give birth to a dragon, literally. I gave birth to a Gemini Cancer Cusper born on the cusp of magic during the year of the golden dragon making him a golden dragon so I'm technically the mother of dragon right now so I just think it's interesting that maybe Scorpios are meant to be mother of dragon type people in the tarot she is the empress of course she's the empress she gives birth to the dragons of course she is it's her empire that we're watching her build it's her empire. I mean, she's the empress, okay? So the perfect card for her for there. And then we have the queen of spears. So she is, you know, the queen, and that is something for her. She just embodies the queen. She just has the power of the scorpion, you know? And then we have six of spears, which is fame looking people looking up to you you know she's such a good role model for other girls and for females especially like the idea that she you know she takes over and she follows her intuition and she does what she thinks is right and you know she just wants the world to be beautiful and peaceful and loving and she just really wants to make things right the two of spears that's just her watching her dragons come back to her really 
it's watching things work out for her so you know watching her ships come in watching her dragons live and breathe and be out there into the world and it's just this idea that she is working on herself and her path and the nine of coins is you know just being happy with who you are like being very comfortable in your own skin and knowing what is right and which way which direction you want to go and how you want to build your empire so she has a lot of cards and she holds a lot of cards in this show like she's got a lot going on and i really feel for her because scorpio energy is that of control the boss energy that like i need to control all this all this stuff going on and and having libra energy as well is very i need to balance things i need things to be perfect you know, if they're not going to be perfect, I'll just wipe it all away and start over. That's very Scorpio, Libra right there. Just starting over. And, you know, you just have to hope there's no men in the way saying, no, you're not starting over. I like where this is headed, right? This is still patriarchy, okay? I thought she did great. I think we should have stuck with what she was thinking, but whatever. Anyways, speaking of death and destruction is another Scorpio that we all loved, and that was Brienne of Tarth. Yes, played by Gwendolyn Christie. She is a Scorpio, and she is so Scorpio. I mean, she's that serious Scorpio. She's the one who's really taking her job serious. Now, there's a couple kinds of Scorpios out there. There's those Scorpios who are fun, and, you know, they let loose, and they go crazy, and they're sarcastic there are those scorpios out there but then there are also those serious ones normally you start off as a serious one and you end up being all crazy but then there are some like brianne of tarth who really take their job serious and in the end has one of the best parts in the whole show and that is when she signs her name in the book as a knight the first female knight that is amazing and that is so scorpio to be the first of their kind to do something masculine because Mars rules Scorpio and Pluto also rules Scorpio which is the underworld and going deep down into the underworld and opening up Pandora's box and seeing what kind of things you want to manifest that other people up there aren't manifesting so she was like hmm, I want to be a knight you know I want to do something that other females aren't doing I want to be strong and I want to show that women can be just as strong as men. So she is the strength card in the tarot. That's perfect. That's awesome. She's also the eight of swords and the knight of coins. For the eight of swords, that's all about being able to release yourself, to free yourself. You know, in the eight of swords, it's this person who thinks they're stuck but they have every resource, every little thing they need to free themselves. They just have to follow their instincts. And Scorpios, Scorpios have instincts. If they listen to their instincts, they're the, one of the most, they actually are the most psychic sign of the zodiac as a water sign. Um, so let's see, water, you know, with Brienne of Tarth and the water of the, the mother of dragons, you know, that water, it's like they're so feminine that they need the masculine, right? because you need that you need that to show like she she is proud of her femininity but she wants to show that even with that femininity the powerful the power of that feminine energy that she can also do what a man can do both of them show that the empress who builds her empire and the knight who is a female that is such a good knight that she puts everyone else she just shoves everyone else aside with how great she is, with how shiny she is. I mean, she outshines them all, you know? She's that good. So, the Knight of Coins is basically what I just said about her outshining is like, you know, the coin that she offers, her value, it's very shiny. The Knight is bringing it. She brings her game. Like most Scorpios, they're good sports, you know, they're competitive. So she doesn't want to just be a Knight. She wants to be the best Knight. She wants to be a great Knight. And, you know, women, no matter what time it is, whatever what time it is, we've always had to outshine men just to be equal to men. It sucks. So, okay. Anyways, 
We're going on to what's next after Scorpio. We have Sagittarius. I couldn't really find any Sagittariuses so uh, that were in the tarot or that were main, main, main characters, but we did have one character who was definitely memorable, and he was a Sagittarius, and that is Hodor, which is played by Christian Nairn. So Christian Nairn is a Sagittarius. Okay, so he plays Hodor. Hodor was a character who basically was always there to help Bran, and so he is a down-to-earth person, right? Keeping him connected to the earth. Sagittarius is a fire sign. Sagittarius is a down-to-earth, optimistic, trying to see the bright side of things sign. So they picked a Sagittarius to play Hodor to show someone who can really keep someone else grounded. Good job. <laughs> Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter, which is a big sign that can really encompass a lot and really take care of a lot. And I would say he has a lot of responsibility, a very big responsibility to take care of Bran. So that's Hodor. And now we're getting to a really big character, a Capricorn, Jon Snow. Jon Snow is played by Kit Harington, and Kit Harington is actually born on December 26th. Now, that's kind of close to Jesus' birthday or Christmas or whatever all that, you know, rebirth again kind of stuff is, like the birthday of a god, okay? That's kind of interesting that the person who plays a Jesus-like character was also literally born right around the day of another Jesus. I mean, come on, December 26th, come on, this whole thing is crazy. Anyways, I couldn't see anyone else play Jon Snow better than Kit Harington. I mean, really, he played the, the role perfect. Here we have him as the Emperor. Very fitting because I just talked about how Daenerys Targaryen is the Empress and he's the Emperor. Now, together, they would have made an awesome empire. It would have been super awesome. I mean, a lot of people would have loved living there. So, yeah, maybe if we had to start from scratch because the last one was so corrupt. I mean, what's wrong with that, John? Why do you have to go and kill the mother of dragons? I don't get it. But he did because he's a Capricorn and they're evil. Capricorns, yes, they can be pretty freaking evil. I mean, don't be sold by his his big eyes and his cute eyes and, you know, his innocent little earthly, like, oh, I'm awesome. And, you know, yes, you're awesome. Capricorns are awesome. They, they are ruled by Saturn. They know things. They can do things. They can, they, they control situations in a way that, like, you know, we need, we need these kings, these emperors, these people who just have a knack for controlling a mass amount of people. I mean, that's what Capricorns are good at. Especially if you're born on December 26th. You could just look at, like, another celebrity who's born on the same exact day, which is Jared Leto, who is a Capricorn who tries to create his own empire and also tries to be like Jesus. So what are you looking at here? We're looking at people born on the same day playing the same type of character in the world of... Hollywood shows, you know, entertainment, okay? So you have Kit Harrington playing Jon Snow, who is literally like a Jesus character, reborn, dies, comes back to life. The Red Witch brings him back, so I just find it interesting, like he was meant to play that. He's also the King of Cups. Now, the King of Cups, love, happiness, joy, um, the cups really ties everything together as feeling and love. And so to have Jon Snow be that character to be the King of Cups would make sense in a sense that we're really looking at his lineage. We're really looking at his bloodline. We're really looking at what goes through his veins as water, which is his blood, which is who is, who really is Jon Snow? The bloodline of Jon Snow. Who is Jon Snow? And, you know, that ends up being very important. So that's an interesting thing. Uh, then we have the Eight of Cups. The Eight of Cups 
is you know walking away from things you love having to leave behind and you know he really had to leave behind a lot of things that he loved in so many ways and so it's just a very dark card and I see that as like the dark side of Capricorn once they they're trying to control things so much that they actually have to surrender sometimes they have to just let go of what they're thinking is the right thing to kind of have faith so uh, speaking of that we go into the lovers which the lovers card is actually Jon Snow and his the girl he loves which is Ygritte and Ygritte is played by Rose Leslie and Rose Leslie is she is an Aquarius, so her sign, her sun sign, is literally right next to Capricorn. It's the next one. It's Aquarius, which means they could literally be soulmates because when you're born, when your sun sign and your lover's sun sign are right next to each other, that could mean soulmates. When you're born very close together, when your birthdays are very close together, you could be soulmates. So here they are depicted in the lovers card and they actually, they actually are lovers in real life. I'm sure when they were creating this deck they knew that. But it also correlates with astrology and Aquarius is air. And Aquarius represents friendliness and connection and an innovative way of connecting. He wasn't supposed to be with a wildling. Jon Snow was not supposed to be with a wildling. So they weren't supposed to be together. In fact, I'm pretty sure that was like his prisoner. So she was his prisoner, Aquarius. They don't really have a lot of feeling per se because they're air sign and he's a Capricorn being Earth. So there was this unlikely compatibility in a weird, weird being the word for Aquarius actually. There was this weird connection. It was like, well, we're stuck together so we might as well like, you know, have feelings for each other because isn't that what people do have feelings it was kind of like that right so but then it turned into a lot more and then in real life it turned into a lot more so creating this weird energy and us wanting to see them get together so it was pretty cool the lovers card and speaking of a loving romantic sign Pisces the last sign of the zodiac Pisces is so romantic I love Pisces. They're water. And they're ruled by Neptune. They're dreamy. They're the connection to the divine. They're the connection to spirit world. They are they are the ones who really get you. You know, Pisces, you could just talk to a Pisces all night long and they get you. You know, you could talk to them about anything and they will love you and they will accept you and they will just be your friend forever. Okay? Pisces are awesome. They could be a little flighty, a little out there, you know, just because they're very dream, they, they're very daydreamy and stuff, but generally a Pisces is actually very smart because they're picking up on intuition and they're listening. And you know, Pisces are healers. They like to give themselves that time to heal others and to heal themselves. Now, in the Game of Thrones, there is one character who needed a lot of healing throughout this show all the time and that's Sansa Stark played by Sophie Turner. Sophie Turner is a Pisces and you can just see it in her face. You can see it in her eyes. She's so beautiful and Sophie just has such a beautiful you know aura about her that she is water. She's this fantasy girl you know she's this girl you could totally see as a pixie or a fairy or you know just this uh, beautiful surreal being right okay that's Pisces like a mermaid you know so that's what I think of when I think of a Pisces I think of just someone who's just this beautiful character and Sansa you know she struggled through the entire show and through the entire series like every season I was like oh my goodness poor Sansa when is she really gonna get her time to shine and to really have her dreams fulfilled. So it was really great at the end to kind of see her just be her and, and shine as a woman. But throughout the whole show, you do see her struggles. So here we have Sansa Stark as the Four of Cups. The Four of Cups is all about, you know, the universe trying to help you, other people trying to help you, ways of healing, ways of coping 
trying to come forefront to you, but you're just kind of sitting like, oh, I don't know what to do. And so it just shows the struggle. Like Sansa Stark was very closed off here and there without not knowing what to do or how to get out of her situation. And it just shows her struggle in this, in this card that she was somebody who had to struggle in silence pretty much. And she would get lost in her daydreams or in her own, you know, thoughts of how things could be fixed. Um, and then the Six of Cups, here she is with Jon Snow. And you see the two of them sharing the cups. And the six is all about networking, all about family, ancestry. It's like connecting, right? So you see her connecting with the one person who really gets her, who she really connects with well. She loves Jon Snow. She loves him so much. So it's there's this connection. And Pisces Capricorn always has a connection. So there is this connection you see there. And you can see it on screen. And in this card, she's got a smile that you don't see that often. Then the Queen of Cups, we have her as the Queen of Cups. The Queen of Cups is, you know, the Queen of Love, the Queen of Water, and that is her because she really does embody a queen, very queen-like energy. And being the Pisces, it is like you would see her creating a whole new world that would just be beautiful but very strict because she would want everything to be so perfect. And she dreams about it all the time, so now she can manifest it. Like, you just see that in her eyes, right? That she's just manifesting this new world for her. And interesting that Pisces is the 12th sign of the zodiac. Now, the first sign being Aries, starting the whole new world. That's the action part. But Pisces is the dreaming part. So she's the dreamer. So she's the one that can dream of these new worlds or these ways of making people happy and making the world a better place. Arya would be the one to make it happen, to start it, right? So you see this and with Sansa Stark, you know, she's just this person who you can just rely on to come up with something magical, something great for our future. And they put her as the star card to end it all and it's interesting because the star card which is an Aquarius card it's a very the star is like the new light the new future and she is a Pisces so you know here she is at the end and she's mastered Aquarius she's mastered the star she's mastered all 11 signs and she's at the 12th sign of her existence she is the Pisces she's the dreamer for the next cycle and she is the one that is going to have the children that are going to be starting that next cycle. And she is the one that is going to, you know, raise the children, if not have them physically, but to raise them, to raise the next queens, to raise the next kings. She's going to be that one with her dreamlike manifestations of this perfect world. That's going to be her, and that's what the star is saying. And in the star card, that is, you know, when the tower falls, number 16, when the tower falls, the star rises. The tower is all the corruption, and the star is what was lit in the dream of the woman, the Pisces woman, that really goes deep into her womb where all the fish are, right? Where all the ideas are, where all the amazing things the world has to offer that's where it all is and she goes there as a Pisces and she brings it forth as the star as the light and she sparks the light for the next future the next cycle all right so that's Sansa Stark we love her that's Sophie Turner beautiful she's a Pisces and she was perfect for you know the whole thing she was perfect to end and to end the last episode saying you know she's going to have her her community that she's going to do it her way and everybody kind of gets their way in the game of thrones and i'm just holding the red witch i don't know why this just ended up here but the red witch you know bringing back alive john snow and being a burgo it's just such an interesting thing when you really pay attention to what's happening here is that everyone is kind of born to play a certain role and when you look deeper into these actors and actresses and what roles they played other than Game of Thrones you're like wow it's kind of interesting like they were meant to play those roles and I have some bonuses that I'm going to add at the end of this video but I just want to say that it's very interesting you know how everyone kind of played their part and astrology is something that even 
looking back you can see how they play their role and the energy of their sign really played into the character but also looking forward into you know looking for who can play a part in your life and knowing what these energies are like and how they could fit into your life so for example not just casting a movie or a TV show but maybe casting your next boyfriend or girlfriend or casting your next um, you know assistant or employees you know casting your next partner whatever it is it's astrology and people are meant to play parts in your life and you're meant to play parts in their life and if you get to know what the stars are trying to say you can see where you're really supposed to go in life and what's supposed to fit into your life I feel like I was meant to talk about all this stuff because I see it I don't know why maybe because I'm Scorpio and I look deep into things but I did find some really cool bonuses and so I'm gonna go into that next which is something that's really amazing is that once you go into not only their sun sign but the day they were born and then you see the synchronicities with what other people were creating because they had a role to play in creating it for example this book here which is called the secret language of birthdays now the writer of this book Gary Goldschneider He had a role to play which was to write this book and the synchronicities that I have found in this book with people's birthdays mind-blowing and that's what I'm going to show you next so speaking of being cast or meant to play a certain role there's also these little synchronicities that I don't know I just thought were so strange for example one thing was Hodor well the actor who played Hodor was born on November 25th, 1975. Now what's so interesting about that is that in this book, which actually, you know, I mean this book was written years and years ago before Game of Thrones was a show, and it was just a book back then. And if you look at November 25th, it's the day of sustained effort. And the card is the chariot. And what does Hodor do? But he is basically the chariot carrier of Bran. He carries Bran around because Bran can't walk, right? So basically, the chariot is the perfect card for Hodor. The other thing is the meditation for Hodor, according to this book, is the dyadic principle grants far more than a doubling of energy to two people joined in an endeavor. So basically, in this book, on the day he's born, the day of sustained effort, it's all about helping carry the weight of other people and being joined into a party of two. That is really weird. I mean, the odds of that. Okay, so I thought that was weird. But the kicker, the best thing I ever saw about this whole thing is when I looked up the dragons. Because I was thinking, I was like, well, when were the dragons born? So I looked that up, and in the episode where the dragons are born, it's June 19th. June 19th is actually the cusp of magic. So I thought that was interesting. The cusp of magic. The day of the spark, according to this book. And on the top, it even has a picture that kind of looks like an egg. A half of an egg opened up with some wings coming out. What are the odds of that? But it gets weirder because in the tarot, the dragons are two cards, the chariot and the sun. So you have the chariot, which is the dragon, and then the sun, which is the dragon. So interesting that the sun card is also the card for June 19th in this book, the sun. You're like, you can't make this up. This is crazy. My mind is blown. So, yeah, there you go. I mean, basically, it's just showing that, you know, these things were meant to happen. And so, the sun, the birth of the dragons, 19. They were born on the 19th. And they're the sun card. So, I just thought, I thought that was awesome. Um... There were so many cool synchronicities that I found between the cards and the astrology of the actors and actresses. It just showed that, you know, people are born to play certain parts. And, you know, I just feel like it's just such a, a really cool thing to discover 
these synchronicities and to look deeply into the way the universe really just makes things happen in such a beautiful way. I think Game of Thrones was a great show. Uh, it was definitely a guilty pleasure because it was pretty dark and all that. But I really loved watching it and I really loved learning about the actors and actresses and how they were meant to play those parts. And I do feel now looking back that you know you really could see how now those characters are, are even more like the zodiac sign and watching it from that perspective is really interesting. For example, you know, Amelia Clark, a Scorpio, the phoenix rising from the ashes. She literally lights everything on fire and walks out totally naked and just walks out like, yeah. You know, I am the phoenix rising from the ashes. One of the best parts in the whole entire show. Um, so yeah, she definitely embodies the spirit of the phoenix, the Scorpio. And it just goes to show. And like I said, with all the other actors and actresses, it they really just hit the mark. So that's it for the Game of Thrones. And I'm going to be doing some Game of Thrones ratings. And um, yeah, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and... Rock your magic.